Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our website for you to watch later at your convenience. I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for anyone who's not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so we provide services, training, um, resources to all types of libraries in the state, so we will have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12 schools, uh, colleges, universities, corrections, museums, archives, <laughs> um, all sorts of things. Really, our only criteria is that something to do with libraries. Uh, something cool libraries are doing, uh, something we want to share. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes have shows with um, Nebraska Library Commission staff who come on and present about services and resources and things we're offering through the commission, but we also bring on guest speakers, which we have today. Um, with us, we have a uh, trio of presenters uh, from out in Shadron uh, in Western Nebraska, uh, joining us this morning to talk about the art show program that they did at the public library out there. Um, this was a presentation I will um, uh, clarify to everyone. Uh, we do also here through the Library Commission, I do an annual conference, a big talk from small libraries, where we have presentations from present, um, libraries that are all from uh, libraries with an FTE of 10,000 or less. And this was a present a uh, proposal sent into that conference, um, but we received too many pr presentation proposals for a one day conference. Uh, so I, um, I'm lucky I have this show where I can say, hey, I can't fit you in there because it's only one day, um, but I can have you on Encompass Live. And this is one of those that we are, we're happy to bring here. Um, so um, Susan, Whitney and Tony, I will um, hand over to you to let you all introduce yourself and uh, tell us about what you did. Um, with this awesome program. Great, thank you, Krista. I am going to pull up my next slide. You should be able to just click on it and it should pop ahead. Yeah. Okay, super. Okay. So I thought this would be a great way for us to introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Susan Rolfsmeyer. I'm the first person in the picture there. I work at Shadron Public Library in Shadron, Nebraska as assistant director and I have an interest in connecting people with science, and now I'd like to introduce Whitney Tewahade. Right, I'm Whitney Tewahade. I am the K-8 art um, teacher at Shadron Public Schools, and um, I was super excited when Susan and Tani brought up the idea of doing a science art um, related art show and to uh, bring the community together. So it was great to be part of this event. And I'm Tani Tibbetts. I'm an associate professor over at Shadron State College in geoscience. And I just got lucky to, to get to connect with Susan and Whitney to, to throw some cool events in the last year and a half. So libraries are great places for informal science education. Um, there's research to back this up. Um, so the slide I'm showing now um, has a screenshot from the STAR Library Network. Shadron Public Library got involved with the Space Science Institute um, and the StarNet Library Network back in 2017 um, during the eclipse. Uh, we applied for and received uh, a grant from the NASA at my library program, and we were a part of that uh, for two years. And I've gone on to be a mentor in that NASA at my library program. But one of the ideas is that libraries offer a low pressure environment for learning science. Um, and you don't have to be an expert in science to offer science programming to your patron. You can be a guide on the side. And so 
I will post a list of StarNet links um, to make those available at the end of the presentation. But I just want to point out that libraries are a great place to bring science to your patrons. And there are so many fun ways to do that, kind of like how we did by bringing together art and science with an art show. And Tani, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to you. OK. Well, I was really excited. I, I first started working with Susan during some summer night sky events that we were holding. Um, the, the area out here really loves astronomy, which has really been fascinating. And so we were doing some star parties. And Susan helped me throw a couple. We did one out at a local state park and then one at Agate National Monument. And from that, I got on the NASA list serve and they were, we were excited about the James Webb Space Telescope launch. And so when the call came out to do events, I emailed Susan so that we could celebrate and collaborate with the James Webb Space Telescope launch. And it's just grown from there, which was really awesome. We registered through NASA and they supported us with a bunch of subject matter experts, one of whom uh, zoomed in and we had a recorded talk. Um, one of my, I had a friend who actually was at um, JPL as a postdoc and he came in and talked to us. So we had a couple of speakers. Um, they sent us a bunch of papers, uh, bookmarks, stickers, event ideas, activity plans, backgrounds, and some, uh, we had webinars and Q and A sessions so that they could train us. We could attend those and we could learn a little bit more about the James Webb Space Telescope about the launch process, about the unfolding and the origami of the James Webb Space Telescope. So we had a lot of support through them. And then uh, Susan made up this amazing flyer you can see here. Uh, we had a whole series of events. We started off um, with uh, some family themed activities that they threw at the library with Susan. We did a kids story time at the library with Ono Astro. Um, and then we started with our community uh, art show, Unfold the Universe. And then we uh, final, we ended that up with our celebration. So all of this was made possible through our collaboration without the support of the public library, the public schools and the college. I don't think that this would have made such an impact on the community. It was really a truly cool experience. I, I uh, really enjoyed it. So. Through the three of us, we were able to collaborate and get new ideas and figure out how we can make this art show work for not just kids, but for the whole community, for families, for groups of people. And this allowed us to do a lot more than we could have if it was just the college or just the library or just the schools trying to throw these events with NASA. Um, and it has led us to work together again. We have successfully done two art shows now, so kind of spoiling the rest of the show here, but um, we also had a ton of fun doing it. We got to see some really cool art, not only from uh, like our Susan, or sorry, <clears throat> Whitney's students at the art in, in uh, the art program, but also from the community coming together and really um, making it a, a truly interesting event. So when we were focusing on the James Webb Space Telescope, we were focusing on what will the James Webb see? What kind of art do we expect to see? And we were trying to inter uh, integrate those hexagonal disks that are so uh, associated with the James Webb Space Telescope now with the big sail, right? Those golden hexagons. So we did the art challenge and we asked, what if we were to present this challenge to the whole community? And uh, Susan really spearheaded this and she put together a bunch of stuff that she'll show you. But um, we worked together to create a community art show and um, bring in participants who may not have had an interest in the James Webb Space Telescope before or maybe didn't know about it. So we tried to bring awareness not only to the launch, but to what it plans or hoped to see. So, and I think with that, I hand it back over to Whitney. All right, so um, having a community art show and just as an educator and especially as somebody who does kindergarten through eighth grade, you know, I see 600 kids a week into um, Fathom trying to come up with an idea of how I would organize an art show that would have all 600 students art on display. Um, without partnership and collaboration um, with the library and college, it would have never been able to happen. Um, but I also want to uh, stress that 
as an art educator, because you are stretched pretty thin, you see lots of students um, usually, and you can, it, it doesn't have to include extra planning. Um, it was very easy to incorporate all of these ideas that we did from the last two art shows right into my curriculum. Um, the Nebraska State Standards for Art Education have a lot to do with presentation of art and having students learn about the presentation of art and what you can do to um, include that into the community. And so having Susan be able to come into my classroom and talk to the students about um, the James Webb Telescope and using other community members to be able to um, incorporate that into my curriculum was a really great way to um, include that collaboration. So um, it also is really great for students because my students were able to learn how to work together. They knew that they had to work with a theme, which is sometimes difficult for students to understand what a theme was, but um, it actually narrowed um, their ideas down. And I was really surprised and really excited about some of the things that they came up with um, to be able to work within a theme. Um, I also gave a lot of the prep over to my students. So uh, they wrote their artist statements, they mounted their artwork, they um, labeled their artwork and got it ready for the show. And so giving them that learning opportunity was really fabulous too. They also got to learn about other people's experiences and their perspectives in art, which was a great thing for them. And so we were really excited about the idea of bringing our community together. Winter's a pretty dark time in our town and, and there's not always a lot of things to do outside of sports. And so we thought, hey, what could we do to brighten up the darkness of winter and bring people together and can we do it? And the answer is a resounding yes. And we hope that from this presentation, you will see that you can do that too. So. This is just based on our experience of what goes into planning a community art show. And so to move from the idea to the event, um, the first thing that Tani and I did when we started was look for additional partners and that was how we were able to reach out to Whitney. Um, so I have these three steps shown here, but we're gonna break this down. When you're looking for partners, you wanna think about the goals for your art show and who in your community can help you out and also, is there something that might benefit um, your partners for being a part of this? And um, and I, I think that this worked out really well. We were able to bring the art show to our community and um, really strengthen the relationships between our three organizations for working together in the future. We had talked about a variety of different places to have an art show. We thought maybe distributing the artwork throughout the community, putting it up maybe in businesses would be a good idea. But ultimately we settled on, um, on a building that is run by the Shadron Arts Center. And we eventually added them as a partner and they let us use this space at no cost. Uh, which was good for us because we did not have a working budget. Everything was pretty much just committed from resources we had on hand. So if you're thinking about holding an art show, you'll wanna consider accessibility. Is there parking? Is there a way for community members of all ages to be able to get to that space? Um, we did not have an, um, any room in our own library facility for this. So it was necessary for us to look outside of our walls and of course cost. So we were very lucky in that the art center didn't charge us for use of that space. But those are all things to consider when you're planning an art show um, for your community. I think those are good tips and ideas for, I mean, many of our small libraries, especially in Nebraska, you just have your library room mm -hmm. and that's it you don't have a meeting room or, or a space where you can do this kind of extra thing and reaching out and and you know what's it mean? you're using the same word open door partnering yeah that's so important in our this tiniest communities yeah it really is our library has barely enough space for us our maker space our staff our books mm -hmm. so this was really great and um actually this partnership has gone back and helped the 
the arts center as well because their mission um, should include visual arts, but they've mostly focused on being a venue for the performing mm -hmm. arts. So this has helped them um, maybe find a new direction in bringing visual arts to our community. So in the arrow I showed before, I made it look pretty simple, right? It's like, oh, find your collaborators in a space and then make it happen. But the making it happen involves a lot of planning. And so I've listed these steps here. We're gonna go through each of them one by one. The first step was calling um, out for artists. And you know, you really need to consider how much time people meet, need. Um, Whitney, for your students, what made sense in terms of a, a a timeline so um i see my students a little bit different each of them so primary and intermediate students which is kindergarten through fourth grade i see once a week um and then my middle school students i see every day for just a quarter and so i wasn't able to do this um, project with all of my middle school students just because i only saw them for a quarter but um being able to, you know, we just did a couple lessons. It probably took my students about a month on average or so to be able to, you know, be introduced to the project, the idea, think about it, do the project and um, make the art so, but I think probably community members need a little bit longer um, than school kids, just because the school mm -hmm. kids are dedicated to their art because they have the class, whereas community members have to do more thinking about what they want to do and, fitted around all their other obligations. And the other point I wanted to emphasize is that we welcomed artists of all ages and abilities. And you'll see that in our, in our publicity. It was not just professional artists. And so we wanted people to feel comfortable making art. There are a lot of obstacles. Sometimes it's supplies, but oftentimes it's just a mental block against making art. So moving on the theme, the first year, um, this grew out of programming we were doing with the James Webb Space Telescope, but it was such a success, we decided to do another art show. And we really liked bringing together that intersection of art and science. And so this year it was really Whitney and Tawny that came up with the theme called Rooted in the Earth. Um, and the idea was to get people thinking about um, geology and minerals. And so a theme is really great. It helps you focus your art show. It's not necessary, but it really helps people um, focus their thinking about what kind of art they would like to make. And so we accepted different types of art. So the question is, you know, will you include poetry? Do you want someone doing performance art? Those are all considerations that will depend on your space, the amount of time you have, and, and just what your interest is in bringing art to the community. And that same question with what media, um, people are doing digital art now, so will they need screens? Are they gonna do digital art and print it out? I don't know if you wanna speak to any more of that, but the idea is that there's different kinds of media that people use can make art. Um, we tried to be as inclusive and open as possible. I think the biggest um, logistical question that we had to address is where and how will people register? We were three organizations coming together. We had student art. Whitney took care of the student art and keeping that organized. And so they um, got their permission slips and stuff directly through the schools. Um, but we had to figure out how to make this work for the community. And so you want to go ahead and set a deadline that is as close to the show as possible to account for those last minute folks. Usually two days before the art show seems to be good enough. I still had people coming on Friday um, before the show, which was on Saturday. And so we created for both years a call for artist poster that went out about two to three months beforehand that we put around the community. And you'll notice that we stress that all ages and abilities were welcome. We um, clarified what geographic region we would allow to participate that way to limit the amount of art, but also bring in as much as possible. We emphasized that the event was free and we also made it very clear where people could go and get their registration materials. We emphasize the importance of having fun. 
Here's just an example of a social media post that we made. So doing the art show brings a great opportunity for library programming and book displays. I was able to visit the school the first year um, in association with the James Webb Telescope Programming, and I brought a book um, that went through the history of um, illustrating astronomy and expressing astronomy in artistic ways. And I talked to Whitney's students about the James Webb Telescope, and then Whitney shared with them you know, the, the artistic aspects, and it was a really fun program. We reached out to local nursing homes, preschools, daycares, um, assisted living facilities. We weren't able to do much in the way of programming, but the thought was to let them know that um, we were uh, that we were planning this art show and that they could incorporate this into their programming too and help um, residents in our community participate even if they were homebound or unable to get um, to the library for other reasons. We, it also helps to make a list of resources for your online catalog or you can make one from um, for print resource distribution and I will go ahead and show that in just a moment but it promotes some of the books in your collection you can use library programming to encourage people to make art so there's all sorts of things that you can do to tie in um, your library collection and your library programming with an art show so for example we promoted our library collection in the show by putting together a list of books that fit our theme. Um, I included books about science, but also books about art. And I had a lot of fun putting this together and um, it actually built interest in the, our art book collection. Our library also made a art cart that we left out for about two months. Uh, we just got um, different kinds of papers and canvases and um, we didn't spend a lot of money on this. We just got um, student grade supplies, but we had a section just in our adult area so that people could come and enjoy making art in a low pressure environment. And then we set up a station in our youth area with age appropriate art supplies because you want the kids to have access to non-toxic art supplies, but you also want adults to have something for themselves as well. And this was great because there are a lot of people in our community who do not have access to art supplies at home. Publicity is really going to depend on your resources at your library, but I think it's important to consider how your partners can help. Um, we just did in-house printing, some posters, but our community radio station had um, Dr. Tibbetts on when they interviewed folks at the college. Um, when our library director went on the radio, she took me with her and we talked about the art show. Whitney was able to reach out through the schools, um, but it's really important to leverage those resources. The marketing department at the college was really excited to help us out. So even though we were working with um, limited resources and, and essentially no budget, um, we were able to work together to get the word out. It can be a challenge to keep track of people. Some folks want to do their registration online. Um, some folks want to do things on paper. And we tried to be as accommodating as possible. So we made a registration form online in um, Google Forms. And then I linked it to a spreadsheet. And then I also added information from people as they brought their forms in. The most important information that you really want is you know, the name of the artist and contact information. Um, you wanna be able to, you know, call them at the last minute if they forget to come and pick up their art. Also, you wanna keep track of the number of pieces that people would like to display. That gives you a sense of, um, as you're going along, what you need to consider in your space and what kind of um, display materials you might need. It's really important to clarify responsibilities because people are giving you, um, you know, oftentimes it's amateur art, but we did have some professional artists. So if you do not have security, you need to let people know. Um, you need to be clear about what the rules are, what age groups 
um, people would ask me repeatedly if the event was free, if there was a show, uh, fee to participate. And of course, being a library, there wasn't any fees. It was free event. Um, it was a free event and non-juried. We really wanted people to feel comfortable presenting their art and, and not be judged. So it was a non-juried show. And we clarified all of that in the rules. Um, those clear guidelines about drop off and pick up times are also really important. And we can answer any questions toward the end. And I will share uh, just a general registration form with you with some of the more specific information taken out in the resources. So again, we didn't have security. Um, we did let the police know that we were having an art show and so they did drive around in the evening. We did not have any problem with security at our show, but it is something to consider and do include that on your release and waiver of liability. You'll also want to include a media release so that um, you can use um, images in future promotions for your art show. Those are all really important. So in our registration form, we asked people to let us know what kind of art they were going to participate. Um, the contact information has been really useful. We sent out thank you for participating cards to people. And next year we will send out invitations um, so that they can join us again when we do this for a third year, which I really hope that we will. You also want to be very clear about which forms need to be returned and which ones they will keep because people do tend to get overwhelmed. There is a lot of information that they need to have um, for participation. And then there's a lot of information that your library and other organizations will need to have. So you wanna make all of that very clear as much as you can on your paperwork. You also wanna communicate with your staff. So of course you share things at meetings, but um, again, people are bombarded with information. So it can be really helpful to make a cheat sheet. So I just shared the one that we made. Um, the other folks who will need encouragement are the participants. So you want to encourage your participants to not be shy or afraid of sharing their art. Um, and when you do that, you'll find that people become much more relaxed about sharing that because art is a personal thing for many people, right? This is an expression of our innermost feelings or our views of the world. So yes, you did write stuff on the form. It doesn't matter. Your coworkers, the registrants, participants, volunteers are all gonna have questions. So just be patient and know that, especially if you're doing this for the first time, there may be some confusion, there may be some stress, but if you take time to answer questions, I think you'll find that it will go very smoothly. All right, I'm gonna pass this back over to Whitney. All right, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about setup, um, and I talked about this a little bit before, but definitely, um, you know, as an art educator, making my students be in charge and be responsible for their own artwork was key to not having myself be overwhelmed, and it also gave them you know, ownership of their art and they were super excited about being in an art show, you know, and having their stuff displayed sort of community members or their family members to come and look at. So that was really exciting for them. Um, making sure, you know, that we have people there to greet artists, um, that we, the check-in was organized, um, that, you know, we were able to give each artist a number so that that way we knew ahead of time with that spreadsheet what artwork they were bringing in, how many there were, um, you know, how many pieces they were going to bring with them, that type of thing, and so that we were able to um, label their artwork and keep it together so that we knew whose pieces were whose. Um, we also had artist labels made for each of their artworks, the community member artworks, and my students created their own art labels so that that way 
uh, community members or viewers of the show who were coming in were able to see who did the art and we could keep track of it that way too. So, um, and one of the most important things I think is to be creative with your displays. So we used all kinds of different types of displays. So um, when you pick your venue, you know, you want to think about like in talking with the people, if, especially if it's not like in your own library or, um, you know, make sure that you visit with the venue and know what they allow and what they don't allow for display purposes so like our venue didn't like things attached to the wall permanently or anything like that and so um, you know we had table easels we had a lot of string and clothespin things and we'll show um, so here is one of the uh, displays that we did this year these were just big refrigerator cardboard boxes that were donated from the furniture store and then um, they were just we turned them inside out so that was just the cardboard and then we were able to display student artwork on those so that made a really great um, display I think the that's awesome. That's so creative. I, I was looking at the picture. I'm like, what? How did they? <laughs> you see, you <laughs> yeah, like there's so, like things you'd have to buy to display on in those kind of like uh, column kiosk type things. But that's an awesome yeah. idea. And I suppose you could um, paint it or something too if you wanted to do something, you know, a different Absolutely. background or. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, and you know, all of my student artwork, it looks really professional with the label on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the kids mounted them all to construction paper behind it. So it was just inexpensive material that we already had in the classroom. So mm -hmm. um, that part was really easy. And the students did all of that. Even my kindergartners were able to do that on their own. So, so that was great. So, and I think the next picture shows um, so the first year that we did the James Webb telescope, we had so many artworks, you know, I have so many little kids who, who wanted to, to do this, that, um, some of them we just displayed out on the table, you know, and the kids had a fun time coming around and looking at them and trying to find theirs, you know, and that type of thing. So that was really cool. So, and you can kind of see the big paper. Uh oh, looks like we might. <laughs> the internet in Shadron isn't always the best. <laughs> <laughs> looks like they might be frozen over there at the library. Oop. Oh, oh hang on a sec here. Um, able to to not do anything permanently on the wall. There were already some clips there that we were able to just string the string through and then clip the student's artwork up. So. And then these were some displays that the community members actually brought themselves. So that is a good thing to talk about with your community artist and include in your registration form Will the community members be responsible for setting up their own work, artwork? Will they res be responsible for providing an easel or whatever, or is the library or the, you know, your partnership going to provide that opportunity? And in many cases, since our artists were amateur artists, they did not have easels of their own. But you know, mm -hmm. we had folks volunteer to build a few easels. Um, Whitney shared her resources from the school. Um, some professional artists brought their own um, stand easels and we were able to work with some of our partners to get display options. But again, um, or, you know, we told the artists that they were responsible for any special displays that they wanted. This is kind of a neat one. Um, the ceramics that are there, this was from Rooted in the Earth, are made from clay. And Nancy actually included a little scientific description of how clay is formed. And so there was just a lot of really cool tie-ins between the art and the science. This is another creative example of displays I thought you might want to. Right, so this is just the strings and the clothespins again and stuff, and they we just have them kind of attached to each other. These were just big, um, it's called diffusion paper, and the kids really enjoyed this. Um, we were able to use some natural dyes on these, um, but this was just a really cool, fun project too, and um, they were really 
showy just in themselves. And there's, there's actually some, the heat vents were right below those. And so it was pretty fun, actually. You know, you wouldn't think of this at an art show. You didn't want your artwork blowing around, but because these were student art and uh, they were kind of light and fluffy like that, it, it made like a whole different type of art effect to be able to have like the, the fan kind of blowing below that, so. Um, and I mean, we found a coat rack. <laughs> yes, this was a coat rack that was just at the art center. So, and these were some light fixtures that my students had made paper sculptures. And so it was fun to be able to hang those up there. So be creative, use whatever you have. So the key is to, um, you know, make this not be a stressful event and know that, you know, this is not a juried professional like art show. This is a community art show that, you know, the, Things are presented and yes, take your time and present them well and make them, you know, so that when you view them, they're well viewed, but like it, it be creative. It's okay to be creative. So our goal, um, uh, you know, we, we probably all came to our collaboration with different goals, but I truly believe in making science accessible to the public. And I think art was a great way to do that. And we also just need more community in our lives right now. Um, there's so much focus on the things that take us apart, but um, working together and bringing art to the public is a great way to bring the community together. So in terms of staffing our show, we relied on, um, well, we the primary collaborators were the primary staffers. So it meant giving some time on a, on a weekend, but um, we also recruited a few volunteers from the Friends of the Library. Um, the first year, we had a staff member who worked part-time. She went to the college and recruited folks from the security department to help. Um, we had community members stop by to staff the show. So again, just you know, be creative. It's really nice to have people there. Um, right now you see Whitney at our greeting table. It's nice to have a table and a book where people can sign in. Uh, this is also a great place to put information about your upcoming shows, um, things that are going on with your collaborators. Um, we used it as a way to promote the geology department. Um, this year we even set up a screen um, to show off events that we've had at the library in the past in the hopes of getting the community excited about the different things we had going on. And so here we have one of our um, volunteers staffing our greeting desk, and it was a lot of fun. I think people got um, a chance to talk to each other. This is one of our young community artists. He was new to our town, and so this gave him an opportunity to make new friends, to reach out to people, um, it was a really positive experience and he stayed there all day, talked about his art and visited with the other artists. And it's great to encourage your artists to talk about their art. This is a mother and daughter team. Um, the daughter was interested in volcanoes and so she decided to work on art related to volcanoes and learn more about them outside of school. And her mom um, shared, there's a picture on the left that she um, took the picture right after her youngest child was born and then she went back to that photograph. And so if you take time to include the artists and encourage them to talk about their art, um, you, you end up learning more about the people who you live with and their stories. So it could be a great experience. Uh, this um, older lady on the side, you'll notice we also made buttons to promote the show. She wanted to talk about um, how she makes her art and she brought supplies and even encouraged people to try um, the methods that she uses to make her art as well. And this was great, her and her daughter um, I just recently moved to town. They didn't know anybody. They were active in their in the arts in their previous community. So both days um, she was there and sharing about our art and we would send people their way and encourage um, encourage new connections. 
-hmm. And so we had a family that for two years, they did collaborative art. This year they made an installation. Um, so the whole family, except I think for the very youngest, got involved in collaborating and making art together. And um, I have been part of the Girl Scouts Art Venture program for several years now. And um, Art Venture is a program that Girl Scouts can sign up to do to earn a badge. And basically they are creating art with a community artist or an artist in their community. And so it's a collaborative piece. And then that piece goes on to be auctioned off to create scholarships for Girl Scouts in Nebraska. And so um, we were really excited this year that we were able to um, partner with the Girl Scouts and have them do this project um, at the art show. And so it kind of brought a hands-on thing there at the show. Community members, the people looking at the show were able to see these girls creating art um, with their partners. And so that was a that was a really great experience. And to be able to incorporate it into the theme too, which was pretty cool too. So we set up an art activity area at the show. This was from the first year. We didn't do this the second year, but we also provided um, art supplies so families could make art on the spot. And a lot of people took advantage of that and just made their own art and then left it out for other people to enjoy. And here are just some pictures of how our community um, was connecting through art. I took a lot of pictures of folks interacting. Um, on the left, we have a grandmother and grandson. Um, she came to the library every day, almost for several weeks as a way to unwind after work and would sit and make art. So by the time she was done, she needed an entire table to display all of her artwork. And it was really a neat thing to see. And then she brought her grandson to the library. Um, right now he's in a blue phase, so he made a blue rock. Um, but it was just really fun um, to see people get excited about art and then how they came together and reached out to one another. So we'll just share some outcomes. The first year, we didn't have as many community participants, but you can see that we had over 500 works of art from the schools, and we had 11 volunteers. The first year, we had um, just about 50-50 on Saturday and Sunday. And again, our community is small, so this may not seem like a lot, but it was also wrestling tournament that weekend. So I think that was a pretty good turnout. Competition, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so then in our second year, we had 39 community members sign up and many of them brought in multiple works of art. And we had 350 works of art from the students. This time, um, was it all the middle school? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, this year I was just teaching at the middle school rather than the primary and intermediate school. So we just had work from the middle school. So. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that our visitors went up to almost 100 on Saturday. So we had a growth of about 35 um, in terms of visitors. But where we really saw the growth was in community participation. And mm -hmm. that was really fun to see. So again, our community is small, but for us, this was a pretty big event. And so we're, you know, we wanted to leave time for questions, but we, and, and I'm, I'm guessing we'll probably Funny. get quite a few, but I wanted to just take you on a tour of our art show. Yeah, so I'll just remind everybody, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, comments, thoughts, anything, uh, type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface and um, we can make sure you get all your questions asked and answered before we um, wrap things up. Um, but we will go as long as it takes to get through everything and to get through everyone's questions too. We won't cut anybody but, off. And Krista, if we could prioritize um, questions for the art, um, the art instructor for Whitney first, because she has to go back to school. In about five oh, minutes. Yes. So <laughs> we can even go out. And I know Tony just had to uh, jump off too. I know she has yeah. had to um, leave early as well. Um, so, so thanks, Tony, for being here with us anyways, but yeah. <laughs> and these are just pictures, so I'll just go ahead and go through some of them. But you can see that, um, you know, we had the hexagons in the back. 
And this is from the first year. One really neat thing to see was to go back to some of the pictures from the James Webb Telescope first images mm. and compare it with the art. Um, I tried to do a little bit of follow up um, with the students during our science programming and Whitney followed up with her students as well afterwards. So it's a great way to reinforce those science concepts. This was particularly funny. Um, it, the picture on the right uh, shows someone in a rocking chair and they've exhaled wow. out the entire universe, but then you can see it's really similar to the mm -hmm. image on the left, which is looking at where stars were born. Um, one of the neat things about this image of the Carina Nebula is that, you know, we've been able to see this in um, even from Hubble, but the the James Webb Telescope allows us to look through those clouds of dust and gas and see those stars. Um, we weren't able to actually pick out those individual stars being born. Um, yeah. Go. And so students collaborated on art as well. So here you see a piece with two students, each doing a separate piece to make a diptych when it comes together. We had tapestry art. Mm. So pretty. A lot of multimedia. This was a piece of community art from one of our younger members. Um, we also had a piece of fiber art um, where the artist wanted to commemorate the birth of her granddaughter in the moon phase in which she was born. This was inspired by a Lakota constellation and um, a map of the sky from Lakota Star Knowledge. And so this is actually looking up um, Orion's belt is hmm. at the top of the hand, which is resting on the bison robe within a hoop. So this relates back to um, how the Lakotas map their night sky through the year. We had someone come in and use our 3D printer to make a, a model of the James Webb Telescope. Yes. The second year our theme was rooted in the earth and so we asked people to use natural pigments or to think about the themes um, related to geology. Okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Krista. I do have to run and thank you everybody for no listening. But I do encourage you guys, if anybody has questions about, you know, as an art teacher and how to do a community art show, you can absolutely email me and Susan has my email address and she can get that to everybody. So if you have questions that you want to direct email to me, you can. So, mm -hmm. but thank, thank you guys. You. Thanks so much. Thanks so much yes. for being here. And so we had um, people use clay as paint. Um, someone had a little kit from the Walmart. They were worried about, well, can I really put my little garden kit in there? Well, then she made some mushrooms. And we really tried to be as open and as welcoming to um, a broad interpretation of the theme. Here is the one example of textile art this year where a quilter um, showed a, a, a tree rooted in the earth and then she exposed underneath and showed the roots coming through. So there was a lot of creative expression in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the family that collaborated together um, also did some interpretive um, installation art. Hmm. Here's an example of some of our student pictures. They were studying an artist who he represents shading um, using different colors. And so the students followed his theme um, in order to make their artworks. One family uh, made a tapestry. So again, we weren't sure how we were going to hang some of the larger tapestries, but there were hooks. So we really had quite a variety of different things. We have a sculpture that um, an independent high school student did um, as a study. And on the right, um, this young woman took some pieces of granite from her father's um, construction business. It was left over from making a countertop. And then she um, painted different scenes of places that she'd been. 
directly on the granite. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Tawny Tibbetts, who was speaking earlier, she made a wind chime out of slices of agates. And so then you can see the scratch board. And then we had someone, um, Jane, one of the friends of the library, argued that, you know, I use cotton string and cotton comes from the earth. So I'm going to submit my string art. <laughs> we even had a gingerbread house because it was um, grown from soil. So there was just such a great variety of art and community mm -hmm. participation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's so, good you mentioned there, actually on this slide, you just talked about examples of, of the forms and things. You did get a question from someone who wanted to know like if you would share um, the, of the, course. all the documentation you had used, yeah. We will. Um, I've already prepared a copy of our presentation that just has the text. So if you would, you know, like the nuts and bolts without the pictures, we'll make that available. And I will share all of the resources that I have. I'll just take out some of the personalized information. Yep, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, with the recording afterwards, um, we'll have a recording of the whole show for everyone and the slide presentation um, that they use. So you'll have that as well. Um, does anybody have any any questions? I wanna make sure we get everyone's questions, comments in at the, um, before we do wrap things up. Um, as I said, we had someone ask about um, getting um, your form so they can hopefully replicate this at their library. So that would be nice to yeah. see if anyone else does do this. We'd love to hear about that. Um, and it happens. And um, we have a very uh, small staff, Krista. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there wasn't a lot of, 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 of extra people to help out, but I mean, we were able to do the bulk of this work, just the three of us. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's very possible. Imagine what you could do with more staff in a bigger community. Sure. Sure. Um, do you have a question about, about costs? Now you did say, um, you have mentioned that, um, you were able to get the location for free. They've, uh, they, um, you know, offered that, um, and that, uh, I think Whitney mentioned that a lot of the matting and stuff was done with um, paper, construction paper, things you already had available. But was there any other actual monetary cost that went involved, was in, was part of this? We did not have um, like money to spend. So it was all a donation of time and in kind. So we did the printing in house and that just came out of you know our regular programming budget um you know so i don't really have numbers to give you i think we spent 40 dollars on art supplies to put mm -hmm. out but everything um everything we did was stuff that we found in house or um and volunteer you know i worked that saturday so my staffing was covered in terms of you know the hours worked but we really we really had nothing ex except our own willpower and the interest of the community to help us along. So we would have covered the cost of the venue. My director said, well, we could have handled that, but mm -hmm. they donated that space to us. Mm -hmm. um, so no, we didn't, but it's an important thing to consider if you want it to be more professional. Yeah. yeah, but we we didn't have anything, but we wanted to make it happen. And so we, you know, hence the cardboard boxes, the coat racks. Yes. Um, it was more important for us to get people interested in science and to bring the community together. And we just knew that we could, you know, we could make do somehow. Yeah, that's just so you got to think creatively. And I think that's good for, especially like I said, so many small libraries in Nebraska and across the country don't have this, the money. But in this case, the 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 cost, quote unquote, was just time and energy. <laughs> um, and sometimes so, that's yeah, all you need. Yeah. Whitney and Tawny volunteered their time. You know, we met um, mm -hmm. a lot, a number of times yeah. to do the planning we learned as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And we did have community members, you know, bring easels, but it was truly a, a grassroots kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, we do have a couple questions here. Uh, I'll do this one here first. Um, if an artist submits different forms of art, so like, I guess in different, um, yeah. mm -hmm something painting, something fiber, whatever, do you, so how did you display them? Did you have the art displayed by artist or by type of art? 
what was the thinking on how that is it? a great question we actually kind of uh looked at things and we tried to make our our displays as aesthetically pleasing as possible so we did split up the artworks um, in different places when we needed to uh, as a courtesy we knew that not every artist would be able to make their own tags and so i did use the same spreadsheet I used a cut and paste to make labels and I'll share that too. It was a very simple template that I did in Publisher. And that did take a little bit of time, probably about two hours for 39 people. I don't know, give or take. But um, we were happy to split up art if, if it meant being able to display it with like pieces and the artists didn't have a problem with that. I'm sure if they requested something, uh, but like, again, I, I made these two things of art and they go together. Like yeah. 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 All right. Um, that was a really so, good question. Yeah. Yeah. So after the show, what happens to all this artwork? Is it, is there some, mm -hmm. some permanent place? Are so you just, it, just oh. give it back. What's the, so again, you need to have their contact information because kids get sick, um, you know, families are busy, they forget things. Whitney took care of the student art and she took that back to the school and mm -hmm. then used that to make a display, um, you know, showing what she did, um, you know, during parent-teacher conferences. Um, as for the community art, that's where those numbers were key and where check-in is key because we also put on the form what time the show ended, what time it closed to the public, and we had a two-hour window where people could come and pick up their artwork before we had to take down the show. So we got the venue for free, but we had to be out by six o'clock on Sunday. So we had two days. We set up on Friday, did the mm -hmm. show on Saturday and Sunday, and then we had to be out by Sunday evening. So we needed all of those artists to come and pick up their work. So if someone didn't come you know, within that time frame, we called them um, and let them know and people were responsible for coming to pick up their artwork okay. and so you just match the artist with the number sure sure awesome all right um that is all the questions i see right now um so um and it's just, it just hit 11 a.m central time on my clock <laughs> perfect <laughs> um so i think i'll work on doing a little wrap up here if anyone does have any desperate last minute questions you want to ask of susan get it into there um but you will have contact information i think I don't know if on the, one of the first slides did you have your contact all three of you. I didn't, but I okay. will put that yeah. in the resources as well. So it'll be on the slides too. So if you anyone wants to email either um, Susan Whitney or Tawny um, to reach out to them uh, to talk more in depth about anything, you can definitely are encouraged to do that. Um, but thank you so much, Susan, uh, for recording this and and um, and everything. This is I thought this was a really fun, uh, cool event, especially with the telescope and everything, um, getting it started. Uh, science and art together totally makes sense to me but <laughs> thank you for having us this yeah. was really really exciting yeah awesome thank you so much and thank you everyone for attending i am going to uh pull back presenter control to my screen to do my wrap up here there it is takes a little time um all right so that does wrap it up for today's show um on our Encompass Live. Here's our main Encompass Live page. As I said, the show has been recorded, is being recorded, and will be posted into our archives. This is the main page for the show. Um, and down here at the bottom, underneath our upcoming shows, we have a link to our archives. Today's show will be at the top of the list here. Most recent ones go on the top. Uh, we'll have a link to recording and a link to the slides and any of the other resources that Susan sends to me will be here. Uh, should have it up by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me. Um, but we will also push that out into our mailing list that we have here at the Library Commission. We also have a Facebook page. You'll notice on some of our session event pages and the main show page, um, we have a Facebook page. So we'll um, post out here as well. Um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like. Um, you can see here's a reminder to log into today's show. We do a little meet the presenter, and then here is the one from last week. So we'll have the same kind of post that will go up onto our Facebook. Um, also, we push out to the Library Commission's Twitter account. Um, NCUMP Live is our hashtag, little abbreviation for the show. So you can search for that on um, Twitter or um, Facebook or um, Instagram. We also post to as well. 
uh, to see if any other when the recording's over and any other announcements about the show. While I'm here on the archive page, I'll show you there is a search feature here. You can search our show archives. You want to see if we've done a show on a particular topic. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom because it's it's large. Um, we have all of our show recordings here going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we are on our 15th year, I think is if I got it correctly, of any of the show. So um, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but we have all of them here. As long as we have somewhere to host them, um, and, um, we right now keep up everything in our YouTube channel. We'll always have them out there. You know, as librarians, something one thing we do is keep things for historical purposes. And we'll always have our recordings here. Um, but just do pay attention when you do watch a show to the original broadcast date of anything. Um, they all have a date here, let you know when they were first um, done. Uh, some of the information will be fine, will stand the test of time, still be good, useful, but some things will become old, outdated, and um, resources and services um, and products may have changed drastically, <clears throat> might no longer exist anymore, some things from 10, 15 years ago. Uh, links may be broken or different. Uh, people might not work at the same library they worked at when they first presented for to um, for with us. So uh, just to pay, do pay attention to that date if you are watching any of our show archives. Um, so that wraps it up for today's show. I um, hope you join us next week. We're going to be talking about art again. <laughs> uh, just coincidentally, we were talking about the Creative Aging Arts Program for um, Nebraska Libraries through the Nebraska Arts Council. Um, staff from the Arts Council will be with us, as well as our um, director of our uh, lead Lincoln Township Library, uh, will be, um, who's an artist and involved in the program as well, will be talking about um, creating arts for um, older adults. So please do sign up for that show or any of the other shows you see here on our schedule. Um, so thank you everybody for being here today and hopefully we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>